today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks, a service that I use when creating every one of my videos because they offer unlimited downloads of their library of over 1 million assets. It's a great selection that always seems to have exactly what I'm looking for, and they're all royalty free so you can use them anywhere, thankfully including YouTube. Seriously, if you want to make YouTube videos or really any other applicable creative work, utilizing a Storyblock subscription would be one of my top pieces of advice. To learn more about their flexible subscription plans, simply go to storyblocks.com slash company man or click the link that is in the description. Orville Redenbacher, we all recognize the name with their signature red packaging. Well, I'm guessing we all know it because it's among the best-selling popcorn brands in the United States. It could be found in just about every grocery store across the country. All of the labels feature this man, who I'm sure many of us assumed was a fictional character, which is understandable because I'll admit that none of this seems real. Orville Redenbacher sounds like a goofy, fake name. And this picture of the guy with the bow tie and the glasses looks like a carefully constructed mascot. The whole thing seems like something that would be made up by a large company's marketing team. Even in the 1980s, he would appear in commercials for the product, and everyone thought that he was an actor hired to play a character. Well, I can assure you that all of this is 100% real. Orville Redenbacher was a real person. That was his real name, that's how he dressed, and not only was he a real person, I think he was an impressive person. Believe it or not, this guy is becoming one of my role models. I'll tell you why in a minute, but a lot of it stems from this slogan that he had. He used to say, do one thing Thing and do it better than anyone. Like you always say, do one thing, do it better than anyone. It's been sticking with me. I think that is some smart advice. And the perfect example of someone who was successful in following it was Orville Redenbacher. It's not a joke when I say this guy practically dedicated his life to popcorn. He changed the food, changed the industry, and still today, more than 25 years after his death, nobody's name is more associated with popcorn. He should get more respect. It's sad that so many people don't even think he's real. So that's my intention today. I want to do my part in spreading the word about Orville Redenbacher to hopefully help him get some more of that recognition that he deserves. His father was a farmer near a small town in Indiana, confusingly named Brazil. To this day, their population has always been under 10,000 people. His father was said to be a big fan of the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright. So only four years after that famous first flight in 1907, when his son was born, he named him Orville. Those are the only two people that I know of with that name, so I thought it was interesting that they are connected. Practically since since he was born, Orville had been involved in agriculture in some way, doing various chores on his parents' farm, but his involvement in popcorn specifically started when he was only 12 years old. He started a small business by using some of that farmland to grow popcorn, harvest it into these 50-pound sacks, and sell it to different stores in town. He would then save the money he earned and eventually ended up using it to pay for college. He attended Purdue University, where he graduated with a bachelor's degree in agriculture, which was a pretty big deal considering he was the first in his family to even graduate high school. From there, he used that degree to work in various positions related to agriculture. He briefly taught vocational agriculture at a high school before becoming an agricultural agent for a county in Indiana where he would help the farmers in the area during the Great Depression. In 1940, he was hired to manage a 1,200-acre farm for Princeton Mining Company, where he stayed for more than a decade, but I should mention that during all of this, popcorn wasn't his primary focus, but he was always experimenting with it. When I say experimenting, I'm mostly talking about the idea of creating these hybrid seeds. I'll be honest and say that I don't know too much about it, so I'm going to keep this at a high level. It's essentially the practice of selectively breeding different plants together to create something that's, for lack of a better word, better on a genetic level. It can be a long process that Orville Redenbacher had been somewhat passively working on for decades. When he was in college, he would learn from people who specialized in researching hybrid seeds. As a teacher and as an agent, he would work on breeding them during his free time, when he was managing that farm, he was experimenting with it and eventually started using those seeds to grow popcorn for Princeton Mining Company that would be sold to supermarkets. It was around that time when Orville had a friend named Charles Bowman. He had graduated from a similar program at Purdue 13 years after Orville and was now also working with hybrid seeds for corn. Well, in 1951, a small seed company called Chester was up for sale and the two of them took it as their opportunity to run a business together, so they bought it. It was 
only a few years after that when they got really serious about creating the perfect popcorn seed. See, the at-home popcorn market is probably not one that we think about often, but it was really popping in the 1950s. I am sorry for that pun. The reason is that everyone was now eating it as they were watching their new television sets. Popcorn itself had already experienced a big boost in popularity in movie theaters during World War II. Sugar was being rationed, so all the candies that were previously popular at concession stands were unavailable and popcorn was taking its place. So when TV ownership went from 9% to 87% during the course of the 1950s, popcorn became a popular snack to eat at home as well. Recognizing such a strong market for it out there, they hired a specialist named Carl Hartman to work with Orville in cross-pollinating popcorn seeds. It ended up taking them six years and 30,000 different hybrids before finally doing it. They had created a new breed of popcorn that compared to the existing kind was fluffier, lighter, left fewer unpopped kernels, and evidently it tasted better. They would later advertise that it expanded 44 times larger after it was popped. The lid was coming right off the container, which was amazing because the competitors would only be something like 20 times larger. In my opinion, they even came up with a pretty good name for it. They called the brand Red Bow, which worked on multiple levels. For one, the obvious red bow tie that Orville would always wear, but also it was a combination of both of their names, Red and Bacher and Bowman. I will stand by Red Bow as being a solid name, but things were a little tough at first. It was hard to argue that the popcorn was superior to the others, but it also had to carry a higher price, which proved to be a barrier for many of the potential customers. For five years, they were struggling to sell it. Orville would even go out to the grocery stores and pop it in front of everybody, giving out samples and showing why it's different from the others, but it just wasn't catching on. As an attempt to switch things up and hopefully sell more popcorn, Orville and Bowman hired a marketing team to come up with a new name, and their advice was to simply name it after himself. I hired a big firm in Chicago to come up with a name. They came up with the name of Orville Redenbacher, which is the same identical name my mother thought of 85 years ago. <laughs> You gotta love that guy. Red Bow was a fine name, but how could you pass this up? Orville Redenbacher was naturally such a perfect marketing character that everyone later thought that he was custom created as a marketing character. A big reason he was on the David Letterman show in that clip right there was to help promote the fact that he was real. So based on that advice, they changed the name and made Orville the face of the product. It obviously couldn't have worked out better, but the overlooked part to all of this is Charles Bowman. He was the business partner. It was originally partially named after him, and because of this change, his partner ended up with all of the recognition. He was fully willing to make the sacrifice because he believed it was best for the product, but that's still pretty tough. Anyway, almost as soon as they made the changes, the department store Marshall Fields agreed to carry the brand. That's when the manager of a big one in Chicago had this idea where Orville would come down to the store and have somewhat of an autograph signing. I know, it sounds weird, but he went there and signed all of these popcorn containers the media reported on on it and the whole thing ended up being some good positive publicity that helped start their momentum. More and more stores across the country started selling it to where they were forced to hire an outside company to handle their distribution. That distributor happened to be a part of Hunt Wesson Foods who was known for their collection of consumer food type brands so they were already working with the grocery stores. I thought that this was interesting. In the early 1970s when the brand was gaining traction but not yet known on a national level, Orville Redenbacher appeared as a contestant on the game show to tell the truth. The idea there was that he and two imposters would all present themselves as Orville Redenbacher, the person behind the popcorn brand. My name is Orville Redenbacher. My name is Orville Redenbacher. My name is Orville Redenbacher. It was then up to a panel of four people to determine which one was real and which two were faking. They got to test the popcorn and ask all these different questions to try to figure it out. It's funny looking back at it today because obviously this guy is so recognizable to us, but the really funny part is that everyone on the panel thought that this guy was Orville Redenbacher. It's cool to see this because it shows that at 66 years old, he was still mostly unknown to the public. Only a few years after that appearance in 1976, Orville and Bowman couldn't produce enough of the popcorn to keep up with the demand, so they sold the entire brand to the company that they had already been working with, Hunt Wesson. And with their resources, Orville Redenbacher soon became a house household name. To my knowledge, that was the end of Bowman's involvement because he stuck with Chester to operate the existing parts of the company, but Orville himself remained involved as a spokesperson. 
Throughout the 1980s, he was in all of these commercials promoting the popcorn and proudly telling the public about what separated his creation from the competitors. One of those features, of course, being the fact that there would be very few unpopped kernels remaining. In response to that claim, he said, every once in a while, someone will mail me a single popcorn kernel that didn't pop. I'll get out a fresh kernel, tape it to a piece of paper, and mail it back to them. That is pretty good customer service. If you happen to get even one unpopped kernel, he will personally replace it for you. Toward the end of the decade, a bunch of those commercials would even feature his grandson, trying to give off a wholesome family vibe. During that time, there were also some complicated changes happening with the ownership of Hunt Wesson, but the end result was that in 1990, the company that now owned all of these consumer food brands, including Orville Redenbacher, was bought by a food giant called ConAgra, where they remain today, meaning they have been the ones producing the popcorn for the past 30 plus years. To finish things up with Orville Redenbacher, he died in 1995 at the age of 88 when he had a heart attack while he was in a hot tub and ultimately drowned. But just look at the legacy that he has left behind. I think that we can credit him for revolutionizing the popcorn industry. He not only scientifically improved the quality of it, he also started, popularized, and continued to promote what became the biggest brand to sell it. Just think that popcorn is a popular food, and I can't imagine that anyone else has done more for it than Orville Redenbacher. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of this guy? Before you watch the video, did you think that he was some kind of phony mascot? Because I can completely understand why. Or even if you knew he was real, did you gain a new perspective? I guess I'll mention this. 12 years after he died, he did make another appearance where he talks about his MP3 player in what has to be one of the weirdest commercials I've ever seen. Would you believe this little baby holds 30 gigs? I don't know what else to say about it. I just thought this video would be incomplete without mentioning it. Also, I really like this idea for a new series, where I recognize the lives and accomplishments of very real people that, sadly, many of us today perceive to be nothing more than a name or spokesperson or even a fictional character. They're interesting stories that I think deserve to be told, so let me know if you have any other ideas for the series. And any other thoughts you have about Orville Redenbacher, the man, or the brand, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.